Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I'm also a technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna to be talking about power regulator noise and how it can couple around your PCB layout. Now we've done a couple of videos so far about parasitic capacitance and parasitics in general and how they affect your PCB layout and your circuits. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at an area where this is actually really important and can lead to a lot of glitching and even high-speed signal failure in certain systems. So we're gonna look at how switching noise gets around your PCB layout through parasitics, and we're gonna have some fun with it on the whiteboard. Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned in the intro, and as I've mentioned, I think a couple other times in other videos, there are two main ways that power regulator switching noise can get from the power regulator circuit, um, whether it's the switching node or some other node, into some other area of your PCB layout. And that is due to number one, parasitic capacitance, and number two, parasitic inductance, or essentially unintended inductance between different loops inside the circuit. To really see what's going on here, we've got to get on the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of draw out a power regulator circuit. So just for the moment, let's consider that we've got a circuit where we've got some input voltage. It's coming in here to, uh, let's just say it's, you know, an NMOS. And here we've got our other NMOS. And here we've got a PWM driver. And then here we have our output inductor and then an output capacitor. And then of course our output would be here, this is our plus and then this is our minus. Uh, here we get V out. So typically in power regulators, the switching node is right here, okay? And this is the node where you have basically high DV DT signals. The voltage is switching very quickly here because these MOSFETs are opening and closing or turning on and off repeatedly due to this driving by this PWM signal. So that's causing the voltage on this node to actually uh, switch back and forth at very fast rates. And it's not actually the rate, it's really this entire fraction that matters. So you could be switching from say, you know, zero to 12 volts uh, in maybe not the fastest amount of time, but this actual fraction can be very large and that's what allows noise to couple through the parasitic capacitance between this node and some other node. So what that means is what you wanna reduce here with respect to this node and anything else in the design is the parasitic capacitance. We have a current loop that is essentially going around this way. And so this current loop has some di dt associated with it meaning that this current is also rippling in time and so ideally you'd like to get that ripple as low as possible because obviously you're looking for a stable dc output here but the high di dt value that is associated along these loops uh, in this whole circuit uh, that can couple to noise to some other circuit in your design through the parasitic inductance so we'll just call that LP. So this is really the, the key to eliminating noise coupling from some part of your power regulator circuit over to some other circuit that exists in your design. It's essentially making LP as small as possible. So making this loop that is associated with the output current as small as possible, as well as making sure that parasitic capacitance with respect to this node and any other thing in the layout is also made as small as possible. So let's take a look at a quick example I'm gonna draw out on the board. Okay, so now let's translate the previous circuit into something that you might uh, see kind of conceptually representing a PCB layout. So here I have my switching regulator and let's just suppose that we have a pin here and this is the switching node. So just FYI, if you're ever reading an application note and they refer to the SW node, they're usually talking about the switching node. So just keep that in mind if you're reading any guidelines or any application notes. Now, sometimes what you will see happen here is this will come out and 
It'll essentially expand out kind of like this, and then eventually you will probably lead over to your inductor. So your inductor is going to be essentially over here, and your inductor will provide uh, the ripple reduction that you need on the output. This may come over here off to this pad. And then what happens next is you need to place some capacitors back to ground. So sometimes what you may have is basically you'll have your ground pin here, and then you'll have a big region of pour here. And then you'll essentially start placing capacitors in parallel, something like this, in order to get the capacitance that you need to form basically an LC filter right here. And then you'll be taking the output with respect to uh, with respect to these two pieces of copper. So this gives you your V sub out. So now the question is, where do the parasitics arise in this arrangement? The parasitics arise due to a big current loop that essentially propagates all the way around, all the way around in this big loop. This big loop can produce a lot of noise especially if there's no ground down here. So the ground underneath these traces is actually really important for two reasons. Number one is the fact that you would like to try and suppress any, any noise that comes off of this, but it is also important for parasitic capacitance as we mentioned in a previous video. So here you've already got a big current loop that you need to worry about, but then also you basically have uh, between this point and this point, you basically have a big uh, dv dt value here measured between these two points. So then you wanna reduce the parasitic capacitance with respect to this uh, section of copper and any other copper that's around. Just to kind of keep this uh, maybe a little simpler, let's look at uh, the dv dt section first. So let me redraw this real quick. Uh, so in this DVDT section, all right, you want to essentially prevent this DVDT section from uh, exciting a capacitance between some other section of copper. So let's say that we have a trace running nearby. Now we have a very high DVDT value between these two sections of copper. And that's going to drive a displacement current into this piece of copper. So this could be a signal trace, it could be a piece of pour for some other circuit. Um, I don't really care what it's being used for, the point is it will excite some displacement current there. So this is where you have to rely on your two main strategies for uh, reducing the parasitic capacitance and reducing the noise coupling from this node over to say this node. Uh, number one, space them out. That's the simplest way. So basically don't route a big long section of trace alongside your switching node. And frankly, if you laid out this circuit correctly or you've gridded up your board correctly so that you had the switching node stuff all in one area of the board and then your signal stuff in another area of the board, you won't actually have this problem, okay? So you won't be routing a data signal alongside your switching regulator to then create this problem where you basically got switching noise propagating onto your signal trace as crosstalk. So this is just as simple as, you know, the right layout strategies. If for whatever reason you happen to have a piece of copper coming along here that is cap uh, capacitively coupled to the switching node, then what you need to do is you could also reduce the distance from the ground plane that's on the next layer, ideally it should be on the next layer, to the switching node here and to this uh, section of copper. Okay, so you've got ground on the next layer, then uh, you can bring that in a little bit closer. And essentially what that does is it reduces the electric field strength between these two sections of copper. And so what I mean by that is it actually causes the electric field being generated from this conductor to be more strongly confined between the conductor and the substrate. So if we just kind of look at a cross section here, you know, if I've got two conductors here uh, on this section of dielectric, and you know, I draw them like this, I've got conductor one, conductor two. Uh, normally there would be some electric field pointing between them, but also pointing back to ground. So if we have some ground on the next layer and we bring that ground in just a little bit closer, it's going to actually distort this field arrangement such that you have greater electric field flux between the traces and ground 
instead of between the traces and each other. So that's essentially the, the physical explanation for why uh, you can reduce the strength of coupling between those two notes. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, how the distance to the reference plane in this kind of planar arrangement is gonna affect the noise coupling between these two conductors, go watch our previous video on how to reduce parasitic capacitance because that is one method that is actually rarely talked about when you start looking at how to deal with parasitic capacitance in a PCB layout. Typically what people will try and do to deal with the, uh, the big current loop that's in this regulator circuit is they will start putting uh, some of these components on the bottom layer. And that's actually useful if you wanna to get to a very compact layout. So what you could actually do is you could conceivably go from this node through vias and then place these on the bottom back to ground and then uh, have the ground come back over to this side and then maybe come up to here to this pin through a via. So essentially what you've done is you've reduced, very nicely I might say, uh, you've essentially taken this big piece of ground, you've eliminated it from the top layer and then you may have confined this all to the bottom layer, essentially kind of like this and uh, that allows you to possibly kind of confine that loop within the layer stack like this, okay? So imagine that the loop is kind of coming out of the page like this where my finger's doing. Now, the only challenge with that is you now also have a challenge if you then also route a trace along in parallel like this. Because if I take a trace and let's say I route it in parallel like this, when I route through the bottom layer, I'm now gonna have very strong magnetic coupling between this loop that goes through the bottom layer and the loop that's formed by this additional trace up on the top layer. So there could be a current loop that excites a magnetic field here that then couples into this current loop here. So you have to be careful because that will also cause noise to arrive on this trace. And if I have multiple traces here running in parallel, then that noise is gonna appear as common mode noise across all of them. Now, the noise will be you know, higher here, it'll be lower here just because of the difference. However, it will still appear on all of these traces simultaneously. That's also very important uh, because, again, we can solve this just with a layout uh, change. So simply changing where we're routing the traces so that the magnetic field that is produced by this section of circuit would maybe point this way, is now no longer pointing into the current loops that's formed by these traces, now they can't receive any of the magnetic field. So if instead of routing them parallel like this, we just switch them, routed them 90 degrees like this, and maybe put them over here, we've then solved that crosstalk problem. The crosstalk that you get from a power regulator over to these traces, uh, it's gonna arise anyways, like you're gonna have a magnetic field that gets generated, but if you're creative with your layout and your routing, you can actually prevent these other traces from picking up that noise as a signal on these traces, and then that could potentially ruin uh, those signals that are on these traces. And it can actually create compliance issues for high-speed signals if you're routing any high-speed signals near this regulator. This could also just be as simple as taking this loop and kind of reorienting where you're putting the capacitors. So just as an example, like let's say I did go into the back layer like this, you know, instead of drawing the capacitors like that, I could basically come off like this. I could go through vias and then I could have my capacitors like this on the back layer, let's say and then that comes over to ground over here. So this is another way to do it. And so by doing that, uh, you basically modified the shape of that loop a little bit. Now, you gotta be careful because you don't want to unnecessarily increase the size of this current loop in this regulator, because if you do that, you're then also increasing the amount of parasitic inductance. So just be careful with how you lay out the, these regulator circuits. Again, really tight and close together. Watch out for layer transitions, because when you do these layer transitions, that noise can couple into these nearby signals as a, uh, via the magnetic field. So the important point to notice with all of this stuff is that this is not stuff that can just be eliminated through filtering. 
That's what's really important because we've been talking about like what happens if you bring data lines nearby any of these signals. And even if these were high speed, uh, let's say these were high speed signals, we can't just filter out that switching noise. This is something that really has to be solved by changing up the layout. Change up the layout, change up the routing strategy, and that's usually the most effective way to reduce noise. The other lever that you can pull, again, Where's the ground? Is it close to the traces? Is it far from the traces? Bringing it closer to the traces is also going to decrease the, uh, the inductance of these traces and it's gonna make them less susceptible to crosstalk. Assuming you don't have impedance control. Now just be careful with impedance control because again, if I bring that ground closer to these traces, I may need to change their width. And if I need to decrease their width, I basically could lose any benefit that I would have due to the decreased inductance that I would get by reducing the distance to the ground plane. All right, everybody. So hopefully this kind of gives you a conceptual way to look at power regulator noise and specifically the noise that is generated by these high swing switching nodes, you could say. All right. So if you like the video, hit the like button. Please leave your questions and comments in the comments section. And definitely, definitely on this stuff, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.